In this video, we're going to look at Pythagoras' theorem. Starting first of all with calculating the hypotenuse, and then using Pythagoras' theorem to find a shorter side. Now, what is Pythagoras' theorem? How do you know when you have to use it? Well, Pythagoras' theorem is a formula that links together all three sides of a right-angled triangle. So if you ever have a question that involves all three sides of a right-angled triangle, where you're given two of the sides and you're being asked to find the size or the length of the third side, then you know that you are facing a Pythagoras question. Now, if you're doing National 4, maths or below, the formula will be given to you. If you're doing National 5 maths, this is a formula that you need to know. Now, the formula is, in terms of words, that the square of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In other words, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared, or the sum of the square of the other two sides. Now, how do you know which side is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is always opposite of the right angle. So whichever side is opposite the right angle, that is always the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the longest side. Now, if we take our formula and try and see if we can work out the third side here, you know that it's the hypotenuse you're looking for. It's across from the right angle. So you're given the two shorter sides, in this case 16 centimeters and 12 centimeters. The first thing you do is write your formula. You want to see in your solution formula, working, answer, and units. So there we have our formula. And if you then apply the information you've been given to your formula, you have the following expression. You know that it must be true if this triangle is right angled. You know it must be true that x squared is equal to 16 squared plus 12 squared. Now, work that out, and you end up with x squared being equal to 400. Now, the most common mistake that people make is they leave their answer like this. Now, think about it. Does this answer make sense? No, it doesn't. 400 is far too big. It is in no way in proportion to the other two sides. So, think about your answer. See if it makes sense before you move on. What do we need to do? We want to find x. We found x squared. So what we have to do is find the square root, and the square root of 400 is 20 centimeters. And that's our answer. Underline your answer, and then you're ready to move on. Let's try again with another question. You can try this question yourselves if you want to press pause. So let's start with our formula. Write that down. Pythagoras' theorem states that this, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. And so, if we apply the information we've been given to our formula, we find that x squared is equal to 4.8 squared plus 5.5 squared. Working that out in a calculator, we find that x squared is 53.29. Again, don't stop there. You have to find x. So we have to square root to find x. And the square root of 53.29 is 7.3 meters. Giving your answer to one decimal place is what we really look for unless the question asks for something else. Remember to include your units. A third example, again try this on your own if you wish, press pause and then check your answer and see, or check your solution I should say, and see if it matches with what we've got here. So again, take the formula Substitute in your values, x squared is 6.5 squared plus 7.2 squared. Work it all out. You find that x squared is 94.09. Take the square root and you find that x is 9.7. Does that look reasonable? Yes, it does. You know it's going to be the longest side. And you know it's going to be longer than 7.2. Now, not every Pythagoras question will be looking for the hypotenuse. 
you may well and you will come across questions which ask you to find the shorter side. Now, this doesn't mean you're looking for the shortest side, just a side that is not the hypotenuse. So again, you have to be able to identify which side is the hypotenuse and which side is a shorter side. Now, like we said before, across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So either of these two sides can be considered to be a shorter side. Now, what do we have to do? Let's imagine that we want to find um, side A. Okay? Now, we start off with the formula that we've got. We take B squared away from both sides, and that then leaves us with A squared being equal to C squared minus B squared. Now, you don't want to find A squared. You want to find A. So, we have to square root it all to get our answer. Now, what I like to remember, the way I like to remember this is to think of S for smaller side or shorter side, S for subtract. So, S for shorter side, S for subtract. If you're looking for the, sh the shorter side, your starting formula should have a subtract subtraction. S for shorter side, S for subtract. So let's look at an example. Now, you're asked to find side x. Now, across from the right angle, that is the hypotenuse. So you know that given the hypotenuse, this must be a shorter side. So you're going to have to use the formula that we looked at just a wee while ago. And you apply the information you're given to come up with a statement that x squared is 25 squared minus 20 squared. It's always the hypotenuse that you start with. It's always the larger number squared minus the smaller number squared. Now work that out, and you end up that x with x squared being 225, square rooted to find x, and you get an answer of 15. Does that sound reasonable? Check to see that it's smaller than the hypotenuse, and that is indeed compatible with the numbers that we have given to us here. Okay? Try this example yourselves. Look at what we're given. We're given these two sides. We're asked to find a third side. Now, across from the right angle, there is your hypotenuse. So, this must be a shorter side. So, start off with your formula. a squared equals c squared minus b squared. What does that mean? When we sub in the numbers, it means that the shorter side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. Work it all out, and you find, when you square root 59.29, that x is equal to 7.7. .7. Does that make sense? Does that sound reasonable? Is it smaller than the hypotenuse? Yes, it is. And that's Pythagoras' theorem. So look out for right angle, triangle questions, where you are faced with a question which involves all three sides. You will be given two and asked to find a third. If it's a hypotenuse you're using, then your formula will involve an addition. If it's a shorter side, then your formula will involve a subtraction. S for shorter side, S for subtract. And that's Pythagoras' theorem.